Hi, hello. On behalf of the steering committee, welcome to the virtual study booth for Arctic Eye. My name is Andreas Ranft. I'm a specialist in anesthesiology and intensive care, and I work at University Hospital Rechts der Isar in Munich. I regularly take care of patients with acute ischemic stroke that undergo endovascular thrombectomy. And while doing so, I encounter a lack of scientific evidence concerning many aspects of anesthesia care in this clinical setting. What is best for the penumbra? What's the right anesthetic approach? Which substances should we use? How exactly to manage oxygenation, ventilation, and hemodynamics before and after reperfusion? The fact that you are watching this video might indicate that you'd like to contribute to the clarification of these issues, just like myself and the community of Arctic Eye researchers. So let me briefly summarize some important information about Arctic Eye. Every hospital where anesthetists routinely support endovascular thrombectomy for acute ischemic stroke can participate in Arctic Eye, regardless of the frequency of thrombectomies and regardless of local standards. During the study period of six months per site, you should try to include every stroke patient with out-of-hospital onset of symptoms who received endovascular thrombectomy in the presence of anesthetists. If you don't get a waiver from your institutional review board, you're going to need informed consent in order to not waste any time in the emergency you will ask the patient or the representative for consent after the procedure. Arctic Eye is an observational trial devoid of any intervention. The data collected will describe the variety of anesthetists' routine care during endovascular thrombectomy. Ultimately, we will seek factors of anesthetic care that, is, that are independently associated with a good or bad patient outcome. Primary endpoint is the patient's functional status three months after the stroke. It's described by the well-established modified Rankin scale. You will assess it on the phone using a standardized interview which takes less than five minutes. So two or three times a week, you scan the angiography procedure list for thrombectomies. If you find patients matching inclusion criteria, you visit them to get informed consent. Then you fill in the data collection form displayed on the next slide. You're going to record information from the patient file, from the intervention report, and the anesthesia record. Three months later, you will call the patient for assessment of functional status. I suggest you check your local numbers of thrombectomies to estimate the expected effort. Talking about work, let's also talk about reward. The study protocol contains detailed rules how a site activity translates into authorship. Yeah, inevitable question. But even if the recruitment for studies on elective surgical patients decreases and comes to a halt due to the pandemic, patients in need for thrombectomy will keep coming so you will be able to continue enrolling patients for Arctic Eye 
irrespective of COVID incidents. You'll find all the details on esaic.org Research Clinical Trial Network. Thanks for watching. And of course, we'll be very happy if you join us as an Arctic Eye local investigator. Bye.